Good afternoon. Headline inflation has now returned to within the target range as expected, with outcomes in March and April surprising on the downside. While the inflation outlook has improved over the near term, the longer term forecast trajectory is unchanged and uncomfortably close to the upper end of the target range. The rent exchange rate and domestic bond yields benefited from increased global capital inflows to emerging markets, which largely offset the impact of the sovereign credit ratings downgrade. With further ratings decisions imminent, risks remain for a further depreciation against the backdrop of continued global and domestic political uncertainty. Domestic economic growth prospects have deteriorated as the impact of the ratings downgrade is expected to weigh on domestic investment and consumer sentiment over the forecast period. The output gap is estimated to have widened and consumer demand has weakened. However, the trajectory of the growth forecast is still positive and the growth rate for this year is expected to exceed that recorded in 2016. The year-on-year -year inflation rate as measured by the Consumer Price uh, Index, CPI, for all urban areas moderated to 6.1% and 5.3% in March and April. Food price inflation was the main contributor to the downside surprise in April when it measured 6.6%. The contribution of the category of food and non-alcoholic beverages to the overall inflation outcome declined from 1.5 percentage points in March to 1.1 percentage points. The bank's measure of core inflation, which excludes food, fuel, and electricity, measured 4.8% down from 4.9%. Producer price inflation for final manufactured goods also surprised on the downside at 4.6% in April compared with 5.2% in March. The further moderation in food prices was also reflected in the PPI with the category of food products, beverages and tobacco products, decelerating for the sixth consecutive month to 6.4%. The inflation forecast of the bank has improved over the near term, but is unchanged in the outer quarters. In line with the previous forecast, headline consumer price inflation is expected to remain within the range for the rest of the forecast period. Inflation is expected to average 5.7% this year compared with 5.9% previously, while the forecast for 2018 has moderated by 0.1 percentage points to 5.3%. The forecast average for 2019 is unchanged at 5.5%. The improvement is driven by downward revisions to international oil price and domestic electricity tariff assumptions. In the latter case, a tariff increase of 4% will, with effect from July 2017 is assumed down from 8%. These revisions have been offset to some extent by a less appreciated exchange rate assumption, and a slower decline in food price inflation. A continued moderation of food prices is expected over the medium term, given the favorable agricultural outlook and significant upward revisions to the maize crop estimates. Food price inflation is expected to average 7.7% and 5.4% in 2017, and 2018, compared with 7.4% and 5.2% previously, and unchanged at 5.5% in 2019. The forecast for core inflation in 2017 is 0 0.4 percentage points lower at 5%, partly due to the lower starting point of 0 0.2 percentage points following the sizable downside surprise in March. The forecast for 2018 declined by 0 0.1 percentage points to 5.1% and is unchanged at 5.3% in 2017. 
in 2019. Market-based inflation expectations are largely unchanged since the previous meeting of the MPC, with the median focus in the latest Reuters Econometer survey similar to those of the bank. The median expectation for 2017 declined marginally to 5.7% and is unchanged at 5.5% and 5.4% for the next two years. Expectations implicit in the break-even inflation rates in the bond market have also moderated since the previous meeting. Break-even inflation rates for shorter dated maturities are below 6%, but higher than the level for longer dated maturities. The global uh, growth outlook continues to show signs of sustained recovery amid rising world trade volumes. Nevertheless, the trend growth rate is expected to be lower than that experienced before the global financial crisis. The current recovery is characterized by downward revisions to potential output growth in numerous countries and generally low levels of productivity and wage growth. Despite a weak first quarter, U.S. growth is expected to average above 2% this year, although further policy uncertainty could undermine investor and consumer confidence. Growth rates in the euro area and Japan are expected to be sustained at around 2016 levels supported by accommodative monetary policies. The outlook for emerging markets is also generally positive. Concerns about Chinese growth have dissipated somewhat following policy interventions but high leverage in the financial sector remains a risk. While Russia has emerged from recession, the expected recovery in Brazil may be undermined by current political uncertainty. The outlook for commodity producers may be tempered by recent weaker commodity price trends, particularly those of iron ore and coal. Global inflation remains relatively benign, although country experiences differ. Inflation is below target in most of the advanced economies, apart from the UK, and the risk of deflation is low, except in Japan. Where inflation rates are being uh, experienced in a um, number of emerging markets, these are generally driven by exchange rate shocks, rather than underlying global price pressures. Monetary policies are also likely to remain divergent. The U.S. Fed is expected to maintain its moderate pace of tightening, dependent to some degree on the size and nature of possible fiscal reforms. Policy rates are expected to remain low in most other advanced economies, but a reduction in quantitative easing is possible in the near future in the euro area. In general, Emerging market economies have displayed a loosening bias, particularly in those countries where previous policy tightening had resulted in improved inflation prospects. The high yield differentials of emerging markets have persisted, sustaining capital flows to these economies. At the time of the previous meeting of the MPC, the rand was trading at around 13 rands against the US dollar. It then depreciated following the domestic cabinet reshuffle and the consequent sovereign credit ratings downgrades by two ratings agencies. Having reached a weak point of almost 14 rand against the US dollar in April, the rand subsequently recovered some of these losses in line with improved sentiment towards emerging markets in general. Some of these gains were reversed by spillover effects of recent political uncertainty in Brazil. Since the previous meeting, the rent has appreciated by 0.4% against the US dollar and depreciated by 1.6% on a trade-weighted basis. At current levels, the rent is still more appreciated relative to rates prevailing at this time last year. Despite the recent weakening, the rent has been supported by a more favorable current account outlook, 
following a significant narrowing of the deficit in the final quarter of last year. A further positive trade balance was recorded in the first quarter of this year, but a moderately wider current account deficit is expected over the forecast period, due in part to a recent deterioration in terms of trade. Non-residents remained net buyers of domestic government bonds in April and May to date to the value of 23.2 billion rands, despite the recent ratings downgrades. This may change should further downgrades occur, particularly with respect to domestic currency ratings. The rent, therefore, remains vulnerable to this prospect, as well as to changes in global risk sentiment towards emerging markets. The domestic growth outlook has deteriorated amid weak business and consumer confidence. The bank's forecast for GDP growth has been revised down for the entire forecast period by 0.2 percentage points for 2017 and 2018 and by 0.3 percentage points in 2019. Annual growth rates of 1%, 1.5% and 1.7% for the forecast years are now expected. This downward revision is due in part to the expected impact of the sovereign credit ratings downgrade on domestic private sector gross fixed capital formation in particular. The downgrade is also likely to weigh on public sector investment through higher funding costs and more difficult access to funding. At the sectoral level, a strong near-term improvement is expected in the agricultural sector, and mining output has also rebounded. By contrast, the manufacturing sector outlook remains constrained, with a third consecutive quarterly contraction expected in the first quarter of this year. In line with this, the latest APSA Purchasing Managers Index showed a sharp deadline. Growth in the trade sector also appears to have moderated somewhat. A slower but positive pace of household consumption expenditure growth is forecast for this year. Real retail and wholesale sa uh, trade sales contracted in the first quarter of this year. While domestic sales of passenger motor vehicles improved, the outlook for the sector remains subdued. Factors such as low consumer confidence, higher tax burdens, the absence of significant wealth effects, and stagnant employment growth have contributed to these weaker consumption trends. In addition to these factors, credit extension to the household sector in particular remains weak and is reflected in further household deleveraging. Although credit extension to the corporate sector is still relatively robust, the downward growth trend has persisted. There may, however, be some relief to consumers from moderating inflation, while increases in real disposable income over the forecast period are also expected to provide some support to consumption, but to a lesser extent than previously. Nominal salary and wage increases have continued to show signs of moderation, but are still at levels that, contrib that contribute to the persistence of inflation at higher levels. While continued moderation of nominal unit labor costs are expected over most of the forecast period, the trajectory has been revised slightly upwards, largely due to the weaker economic growth projections. International oil prices have uh, firmed since the previous meeting, having declined to levels below $50 per barrel at one stage. The recovery was a response to the indications that the OPEC agreement to curtail output would be extended for a further six months. However, the fragility of this agreement and the increase in shale production in the U.S. is expected to curb increases going forward. The international oil price assumption has been revised down by $2 per barrel for each forecast year, but the moderate upward trend has been maintained. Domestic petrol prices increased by around 50 cents per liter in May, 
due to the weaker exchange rate and higher international product prices. The current over-recovery in the petrol price indicates that a reduction of around 20 cents per liter is likely in June, mainly due to international price movements. The short-term inflation outlook has improved further since the previous meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee. Headline inflation in April was lower than expected, largely related to the pace of food disinflation. The MPC notes, however, that there have been broad-based downside surprises in core inflation as well. The current forecast does not incorporate the most recent outcomes, and further downside surprises in the coming months could impact on the starting uh, point of the forecast and lower the entire trajectory. However, in the absence of such revisions, the MPC remains concerned about the persistence of longer-term forecast trend at elevated levels within the inflation target. This gives very little headroom to absorb the impact of possible adverse shocks. The rent remains a key upside risk to the forecast. The rent has, however, been surprisingly resilient in the face of recent domestic developments. This is partly due to offsetting factors, particularly positive sentiment towards uh, emerging markets and the improved current account balance. The current level of the exchange rate at below 13 rands uh, against the dollar is slightly stronger than at the time of the last meeting and stronger than that implicit in the starting point for the real exchange rate assumption. The outlook for the rent and therefore the risks to the inflation outlook will be highly sensitive to unfolding domestic political uncertainty as well as decisions by credit ratings agencies. The rent could weaken significantly in the event of a worst case ratings downgrade scenario that could result in South African government bonds falling out of global bond indices. The downside risk may come from electricity tariffs. The increases from July may be lower than the 4% now assumed given the 1.8% guideline for municipalities published by NERSA. However, there is a great deal of uncertainty with regard to this assumption for next year when a new application from ESCOM is likely. Currently, an 8% increase is assumed for July next year. The MPC assesses the risks to the inflation outlook to be more or less balanced. Domestic demand pressures remain subdued, and given the continued negative consumer and business uh, sentiment, the risks to the growth outlook are assessed to be on the downside. In light of these developments, the MPC has decided to keep the repurchase rate unchanged at 7% per annum. Five members of uh, the MPC preferred an unchanged stance, while one member preferred a 25 basis point reduction. The MPC remains of the view that the current level of the repo rate is appropriate for now and that we are likely at the end of the tightening cycle. A reduction in rates would be possible should inflation continue to surprise on the downside and the forecast over the policy horizon be sustainably within the target range. However, in the current environment of high levels of uncertainty, the risks to the outlook could easily deteriorate and derail the current favorable uh, assessment. At this stage, let me uh, invite you to uh, post any questions that you might have. And uh, as usual, please uh, uh, indicate your name and the media house that you come from, and we will uh, uh, deal with your, uh, your questions. Arabile. Good afternoon, Governor. Um, Arabile Kumete, Bloomberg News. Uh, two questions. In your speech, you've, uh, you've made note of um, the expectations implicit in the break-even inflation rates um, and how those have moderated. Um, does that help you confirm the end of the rate hiking, hiking cycle? Um, 
considering yesterday's events with regards to CPI coming down lower than expected, does that actually confirm the end of the hiking cycle? Um, and it, with this moderation, then the break even, um, does that give you some sense of a possible cut later in the year? Okay. Is that the only question? Oh, you have been checking his script. Uh, good afternoon, Governor. Given that you went with a hold, was it just a numbers... I, 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 for the purpose of the record... Oh, sorry. I'm Khalang Bata for Bloomberg News. Given that uh, the MPC went with a hold, what were some of the reasons that were put forward um, against the 25 BPS um, cut that was proposed by one of the members? My second question is, uh, you've said that there is a risk to further rent depreciation, uh, possibly due to... Um, further credit ratings downgrades. Um, to what extent have you priced in uh, the risk of further ratings downgrades in your forecast? And just lastly, also to what extent have uh, you priced in increasing political uncertainty in your forecast? Because we've seen uh, political um, you know, situations in the country uh, really impacting the rent quite significantly. We also have a number of those key political events yet to happen this year, the policy conference, the possible decision on the secret ballot voting in Parliament. Have you guys um, priced any of that uncertainty into your forecasts? Uh, yes, young man. Good day. I'm Vonako from Reuters News. Uh, sorry. Two questions. Uh, has the bank considered or felt any pressure to move away from the policy of inflation targeting? And the second question is, what has been the impact of the RAND's volatility on the bank's accumulation of FX reserves? Thank you. Your, your first question, Mfunego. Uh, uh, Police on inflation. Did you say uh, we under pressure? What is? No, no. I asked if you had considered, or have you been? Have you felt any pressure to move away from inflation targeting? Um, Hillary. Governor Hillary Joffe from Business Day. I'm wondering, are we getting a bit of a mixed message here? Uh, because first you say we are likely at the end of the tightening cycle, which is a shift, as I um, recall from, from your previous language, was that we might be nearing the end of the, 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 the hiking cycle. So that looks kind of like a shift in stance. And then you go on to say, but um, in the current environment, it could all easily deteriorate. So is that a mixed message, and can you clarify? Thanks. Okay, um, let's, let's deal with those uh, uh, four and then we will come back uh, uh, for another round. Arabile, do the expectations uh, embedded in uh, uh, the break even inflation uh, reflect that um, um, uh, you should be considering a cut? Well, uh, why? Because they are within the target. When they were outside the target, would it have meant then that we should have hiked? No. This is just but one input. Um, the inflation expectations are very important for monetary policy settings. And what we do is that we consider three different measures of uh, uh, inflation expectations. Uh, deriving them from the difference between nominal uh, bonds, yields, and uh, the yields of uh, inflation-linked bonds, uh, which gives us the break-even uh, inflation, is one uh, measure. The other is the survey that we do with uh, the Bureau for uh, Economic Research that surveys market analysts, surveys uh, uh, trade unions, and surveys uh, corporates. Uh, that is another input. And then, of course, there is the third input, which is the um, uh, surveys that are either conducted by Bloomberg or by writers. Uh, 
So we consider all of those, and sometimes they even give mixed uh, uh, signals. That's just one output. Of course, then, uh, we will look at our own focus as the bank as another uh, input. Amongst those, we will consider a range of other uh, 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 indicators. We do not follow any of this mechanistically. And that is why you have a committee that must deliberate and say, what do all of this tell us? And on the basis of the totality of all of those factors, we arrive at a decision of hold, cut, or hike. So even a hold is still a, uh, a, a decision. Well, does this mean a, a cut uh, later in the, uh, in the year? Well, I don't know why uh, people run ahead of, uh, uh, of themselves. The policy horizon is a uh, 12 to 18 months uh, a horizon. So if you think that you want to study where monetary policy is going, you should be looking at the inflation forecast of 2018 and 2019 and says, the MPC says, we will consider the cut if inflation is sustainably within the inflation target range. And then you will have to ask yourself, is it? Is it not? The statement refers to the fact that we are still uncomfortable that the forecast is at the upper end uh, of, the, uh, of the target range, even if it is within, uh, if it is within the target. Amkhanang, what were the views against the um, uh, uh, a 25 basis points cut? Well, we could as well ask, uh, what were the views against the hold? Uh, although no one argued for a hike, we could have also asked, why didn't you hike? And so what you find in the statement is a narrative that uh, stresses the balances between what we see as the impact on the immediate term in terms of inflation and in terms of growth and what we think would happen over the policy horizon and then we make a decision uh, on the basis uh, uh, of that. So if there is one member who had argued for a cut, whether it's me or it's any one of uh, them here, uh, you will never figure it out who it is, but they, they will tell you the MPC has decided to keep rates on hold. The risks uh, to the exchange rate due to the downgrade, did we price it in? We don't price anything in. We can either, because we don't make prices, we can only either incorporate it into our forecast or we can state it as a risk. It's not incorporated in our forecast. We have stated it as a risk to the outlook, as we say in the, uh, in the statement. Detail for political uh, uncertainty. Uh, if, I, if the bank employed political analysts, maybe we might try and f factor these things into the model. Unfortunately, we employ economists and all that they know is to beat the numbers until they confess. So there isn't much that I can help you with uh, the political uh, uncertainty. Suffice to say, it does affect the sentiment, both consumer and business, uh, business sentiment. If we now go, uh, have we considered or have we felt the pressure to revisit the policy of inflation uh, targeting? Um, we haven't considered it and um, we haven't felt the pressure, if the pressure does exist, it has not been exerted on us uh, 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 as yet. Um, but uh, if it were to happen, uh, what should we do if we are under pressure to uh, abandon that? That would mean that we must um, uh, violate the Constitution, because the Constitution said that we must protect the value of the currency uh, in the interest of balance and sustainable growth in the Republic. And the day we stop doing that, we are in violation of our mandate, irrespective of the pressure. Be that as it may, if the pressure does come, the Constitution expects us to act independently and without fear, favor, or, pre or prejudice. So uh, unless uh, one day you have a bunch of 
MPC members who are cowards and would uh, decide not to act without fear, maybe you might get worried. And I can tell you now that the current crop will defend vigorously the independence of the bank uh, in pursuit of its uh, uh, mandate. Has the volatility of the uh, uh, currency impacted the bank's policy on uh, uh, the accumulation of reserves? Uh, no, it, it hasn't. Um, but you must understand that the stated policy is that we would, when there are opportunities of big ones of capital flows, that we will consider using that opportunity to cream off and continue to, uh, to, build, uh, uh, to build the reserves. So it's not based on the level of the currency, it's based on the quantum and sustainability of the, uh, of the capital flows that we, uh, we come in. Uh, editor Hilary Joffe, the, 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 the language I had got to understand uh, 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 this thing, likely may be at the end of the uh, uh, tightening cycle. Well, it still tells me the same thing. We have not reached the end of the uh, tightening uh, cycle, but we are likely getting to that end of that uh, tightening cycle. What would uh, get us to stop that? We have said it very clearly. If we see the evidence that the inflation rate is retaining within the inflation target range sustainably, then we will consider uh, 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 changing uh, the stance. Now, you say, but you say that this could change if the situation deteriorated well. I was waiting for you to say, why didn't you say, uh, as usual, we shall be data dependent? Well, because that is exactly what it means, that uh, we will consider data. But remember, in considering data, we can consider today's data. Today's data is not going to help as much in making decisions. What is important is what the data would look like in the future. And that is what informs the decisions that we take. Any other questions? So everything has been very clear. Nothing on the... Uh, 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 thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the proceedings of today.